Hello, my loves. I actually was not planning on doing a video today, but something monumental just happened. There's a reason why I don't have my whole face in the video. It's because I was actually just sitting on the bed, doing me, watching a video. I haven't watched a video like all day. And I'm just leaning forward, right? I can show y'all this part. I'm just, I'm chilling, right? I'm leaning forward and I feel a pop and I'm like, but it's the synchronicities for me, okay? So if you're on this journey, I am like super excited. I'm so, <laughs> I am super excited, okay? If you're on this spiritual journey like I am and you're coming into your own, you know, you're actually coming out of hermit mode, um, and you're teaching what you've learned and things like that, right? You, you've, you know about synchronicities because God can't talk to us like we want him to talk to us. Like if, if you like me, you want him to come sit down on your bed, she, and be like, girl, boy, do this, do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. But that is not how this life works. Why? Because we have free will. Okay. So, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people, right, about my situation, about what I should do, what I shouldn't do, et cetera, et cetera. But the only people I am listening to are myself and God and everybody who work for God in the spirit world, Okay any of my intuition, anything like that. That's all I'm listening to. And if you know me and you and, and you understand my life, you understand that I have never sat still my entire life. Not from the moment I was born, not 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 even up until like maybe three years ago. And so on this journey, one of the first things I did was I went to visit all the bo all botanicas that I could find here in um, in Georgia. I mean, I drove all over Georgia. I was on the south, northwest, east, everything. And I came across this lady and I got to go back to her. Because when I started this journey and doing research, I came across waste beads. It's not for everybody. I get it. But I bought these waste beads, y'all. I bought these waist beads the beginning of my journey when I was buying my crystals I bought my waist beads and one of the ones I bought was this one I have had this waist bead on for I mean look you can see the lint balls on it y'all see you can see the lint balls where it's been spaced out permanently because it has lint balls on it right I bought that waist bead almost three years ago. Well, actually three years ago because I actually bought it when I first started. And when I first started, it, it was more physical than anything because I was going to the gym and I was working out and I was I was come I was getting it, y'all. I was getting it. But you know, because the devil knows what I am meant to do, he tries to stop. You, you 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 can't stop it you can prolong it and understand that for you as well that the devil can't stop what God has planned for you the devil can it can't stop it it can it can it, it can t deter it it can prolong it it can make it take a lot longer than it normally would by running interference and running black magic on you and that's what I'm dealing with now okay but I'm dealing with it in strides. Oh my gosh. Listen, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. The synchronicity, the synchronicity. Y'all just don't even understand right now. I am giddy. I am so giddy. Because I kind of been beating myself up because I have been living out some of myself in the old. And 
I get it. I understand the why, which is why I'm not beating myself up so much. But it is challenging when you have black magic being done on you. But all that does, it should make you be yourself even more. That is the natural way. That is the God-given way that you can combat black magic being done on you. Black magic meaning them trying to confuse your brain. Black magic meaning them trying to deflect onto you. You're being the scapegoat, okay? No one else takes... uh, Number one clear sign that you are a scapegoat is if you have 10 or more people, and that's my situation, when you got 10 or more people and you are the problem for each one of them. Mind you, you ain't nobody mama, you ain't nobody daddy, but everybody says that you are the problem and no one says where they are the problem you know where you are the problem because you've made amends you've admitted you've discussed it you've done it right but yet and still you're surrounded by those that still want to make you the scapegoat deflect them that's black magic people aren't held accountable for their own okay no one has come if it, if no one has come to you and said i am sorry for this and i'm going to do better but you have done that understand you are still being used as a scapegoat but anyway i digress let's get to the positive let's get to the positive okay so <clears throat> god doesn't talk to us like i can sit and talk to you guys right now he doesn't Now, he can send vessels to talk to you that way. And if you're in tune and your ego is out of the way, no matter what they are saying saying to you, even if it's coming from a person that you don't care for, you will get the lesson out of it. And so I'd say about a month or so ago, about a month or so ago, I started seeing these birds and they were like right outside my window and they were loud and they still are loud. And then I seen two of them together, just two, just two. And so curiosity, I Googled what it was and it was crow. So then, you know, fast forward and I come across a synchronistic reader, okay? And as I'm, I paused her video to make this video. And as I pause, um, the clock says 555, no BS. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take a screenshot just because it's beautiful. I'm gonna take a screenshot. So that's just change for me. That's just, well, the beginning of her reading, the first thing she pulled was two of cups. Okay. And that's the energy I'm in because I just posted a video like she almost ready. I'm getting ready. But to me, being ready is I don't want to be living in myself. No, but I understand what is taking place. We all have things that we want to change and we are harder on ourselves than we are on other people in demanding how they respect us. But this is a good moment. This is a happy moment because I just posted that video and I've not posted a video about love before knowing, you know, I love love. I I live for love, but I thought love was self-sacrificing and it is not. So for 45 years, I was doing it wrong. I was, I'm not gonna say I was doing it wrong. I was doing it insufficiently, inefficiently, okay? And so, as I turn the page, I'm like, okay, I'm ready though. Even though I am not where I want to be, my heart is open, my mind is clear, My body is physically ready to accept love with open arms. Plus, I'm about to be 46, right? And I vow that I will live these next remaining years that God will gift me with to the fullest of my abilities. 
And so I had a, a conversation with a homegirl and, you know, people who are honest and truthful and know my situation are honest and truthful. They always be like, why don't you leave? You need to leave. Like for, for these past two years, three years. Now, her suggestion was to do a shelter and I looked it up. I Googled it, right? But in this season, in this walk, in this journey, God requests us to do things that we normally don't do that is out of our comfort zone. And me getting up and leaving is not out of my comfort zone because I've done that my entire life. And it's always dealt with family. I have moved twice out of state because of family. First time was when I moved to Chicago. I was 25. Second time was 2016. I don't remember how old I was. But I was in my 30s or 40s. Just turned 40. I don't know. We'll see. I'll do the math after I get out. So, this time... I'm listening to God. And God is saying, sit still, I got this. It's, it's easy for me to get up and go. It, it's never been a problem. It's always been hard, difficult, damn near impossible for me to sit still and wait on God. And understand, when we wait on God, Things move effortlessly. You won't have to fight for it. You won't have to demand it. You won't have to cry about it. It will be effortless. And so I explained it to her. But the way I explained it to her was in a lot of profanity. As if I was one of the girls on the Bad Girls Club. And folks was trying to get me out, but I was staying to the end. Okay, that that's how I explained it to her. I don't need to go into detail about that, but that's how I explained it to her. If you ever watched any episode of the Bad Girls Club, you understand what I'm talking about. And so, because I am new and I'm coming out of this, I still had doubts about what I was saying. Not a doubt, but it was like, okay, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I'm sure. But it was still a hesitation. But today, I got my confirmation. And I'm tying all this in because that's how God works. He didn't answer me the way I was anticipating him to answer. But I got my answer triple time. As I was posting this video, as I seen the sign, and as this waist beat that I had on, the very beginning of my physical, spiritual, mental, emotional journey. And so we all know that anytime you have what some may consider a talisman, like the cross Christians wear on their neck, like the beads or the crystals that I wear, you know? But when it's like crystals, and, and I got these crystals for clarity, illumination, and to clarity of mind, let me be specific, illumination, and to help in the process of my shadow work. I want it to be pure. I've had this for three years, y'all, and it finally broke. Do you know what that means? That means I've arrived, baby. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, I still struggle, but who doesn't? And that in itself is a message for you. So if you are struggling and you're finding it difficult to see your growth, God is talking to you and he's showing you where you have grown. Cut yourself some slack. 555 five, five is change. Change is the number of change. And so this is it. This is it. 
This is it. This is it. This is so it. This is so it. And I lit a, um, a chakra candle. And I wrote all over it. And it was just basically giving thanks to my ancestors, giving thanks to God. Um, just wanting to get rid of any and everything that no longer serves my highest purpose. And I know that is cliche, but I will continue to say that for the rest of my days. Because this is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning. This is literally the beginning, y'all. Yo, I'm ex so excited. Like these broke. I don't have no waist beats on now. I'm going to feel naked. Oh my goodness. And I'm naked right now. Like literally. Oh, the synchronicities. God, what you finna do to me? I'm exposed. I've, I've been exposing my emotions and myself and my trials and tribulations in the midst of black magic, in the midst of shadow work. But I wanted to share this with you. I'm sitting here with the with the beads that came, y'all. You know, y'all see them? Oh my gosh, this is exciting. I'm ready though. I'm ready. And you are too. You are, if you've had any doubts about how ready you are for the next phase, understand that God makes no mistakes. We make mistakes, but God makes no mistakes. We make mistakes, but God makes no mistakes. Makes no mistakes. So if nobody told you guys today, you got this and I love you. You really do. This is a beautiful moment for me. This is real time. This is Saturday, July 3rd, 739, four days away from my birthday, my born day, my blessed day. And, you know, keeping it a stack, keeping it 100, I want I want to be any place. That's what I was thinking for my birthday. This is what I was thinking last month. This is what I was thinking. I wanted to be in my own space for my birthday. That, that was the gift I wanted to give to myself. But if I don't, this right here is my gift to myself. This right here. This was my, I was asking for confirmation. And this was it. My waist beats. Their job is done. It took three years. I really got to find a receipt to this and see when. But I remember. I remember. And so many have come and gone. But these were the last of the Mohicans. This is a moment. I may have to have like a little moment with them. Yeah, I, I definitely shall. I love you guys. It definitely gets better. Every day, every day you wake up, it's another day to get better. To get more whole. To get more clarity. To get more direction. And I still can't tell you. I know what direction I'm heading in. But I can't tell you. Like all the T's and the I's that I got across and dot. I, I can't tell you all of that. But I can tell you one thing. It's going to be a hell of a ride. Because I don't have to be afraid. God is literally the head and the source of my life. And on this path, I have learned to relinquish control after I've done my part. Not give them all control because then that's not free will. And then that means we're being passive aggressive and we just waiting on the Lord to change our circumstance. Yeah, I'm waiting right now, but in the midst of me waiting, I still grow. I still learn. 
we as humans have to get out of the mindset that money is the end all that be all. It's not. It's It really isn't. They make it seem as such. Not saying that it doesn't help. It definitely does help. But it isn't the end all that be all. And we've seen that. You've seen a lot of um, wealthy people take their lives. Rich people take their lives. So I am blessed and highly favored, divinely guided and divinely protected to have been given my peace of mind. I'll take peace of mind, peace of heart over any amount of money. I truly would. Because that means no matter where God places me, in the middle of a jungle, on, 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 a, on a beach, desert island, it doesn't even matter. I will find contentment and find happiness and peace within myself. And not on with any object, not with any one person, with me by myself, I can find that. That is what this journey is about. And sometimes God has to strip us, strip us of everything in order for us to get that part. Meaning, sometimes our friends and family get stripped from us. Sometimes our job gets stripped from us. Sometimes our car gets stripped from us. Sometimes everything gets stripped. In order for you to understand, understand, and overstand that peace comes from within it will never come from an outside source. It just won't. And for a long time, I thought peace came through my family. For a long time, I thought peace came through my friends. It never dawned on me that peace comes from within me, from myself. I thought if they were happy, then I was happy. It don't work that way, babes. Love yourself enough. Love yourself enough to let go of any and everything that no longer serves your highest good. If it's bringing you pain, you got to let it go. If it's bringing you heartache, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. If it's bringing you constant, consistent disappointment, meaning they're not there for you, no support, you have to let it go. Yeah, you can love them still. Letting go is not letting go of love. Once I love you, I love you forever. There is not one person that I have not come across that I said I love it and, and stop loving. No, never stop loving. But at some time, at, at some point, you have to draw the line. But this is this is a celebration. This is a celebration. You are drawing the line. Okay, you are drawing it right now by sticking up for yourself. Yeah, some of us didn't have parents that stuck up for us or didn't defend us. That's why you do it for yourself. This is how you reparent yourself, okay? So now I'm going to get back to my day because it was so relaxing. It was so relaxing, y'all. Can I show y'all again? Listen, I'm going to shake it up so y'all can see that those are actual lint balls around it. That's why they're not coming down. That shows you how long I have had these on I am naked on the waist now. Oh, I feel naked. Oh, I need another waist bead. But I really want to go back to the lady that sold me that because I bought other ones and hers was the only one that lasted that long. They did their job. I'm sad. They did their job. I don't know what that was. Let me look at my lips. Yeah, that's what that was. I think I need some water. Yeah. Uh Y'all, I'm super excited. I was concerned, though. Hold on. Yes. I'm getting some water. <laughs> All right. All right, my loves. Look at y'all. I mean, it broke right while I was sitting down. Do y'all see them beads? Look at that. I'm so excited right now. Mm. Listen, I know we focus on healing and the shadow part, but now it's time we start focusing on 
God's blessing and his promise. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know so. We can still talk about shadow. I think I put up a lot of videos on the shadow work and dealing with difficult people. And, and when I get to a space where I can actually organize and write down and have a, a station set up and all that good stuff, you know, I will go into more detail because I wrote a lot down. I journaled. I've been journaling since I was 13 years old. So we going to get into it, but let's get into these little lessons. Five, five, five on the clock. Then, and I stopped a minute. Okay, so she said two of cups first. I stopped the video because I leaned forward and I felt the pop. I didn't even look at the time when I stopped it. And I was trying to debate. I don't know if I can show y'all the video. No, I can't. I was seeing if I was going to be able to turn it over. But, yes. I'm pretty excited. That, to me, means the page has been turned. In the new book. Okay? This is not our old book anymore. We, we close in the book. We close in the whole book. We not close in a chapter. We not we not closing a segment. We closing the whole book. This is a new page in a new book. So I'm closing the pages. I am closing the book on the pages of abandonment issues and addictions, unhealthy addictions. And I still I still struggle, but I understand why I struggle. And every day I get better. Okay, food has been my number one addiction my whole life, and yeah, I'm on my vegan journey, but I still struggle. Junk food, salt, and sugar, I still struggle. I do, and understand you struggle too, and it's okay. We're never gonna be perfect, not never. Striving for perfection is only going to lead us to heartache and disappointment because we will never be perfect. If you are striving for perfection for one person because you think they'll love you more, or, and that could be your, your mother, your daddy, your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whomever, understand you will never be that perfect for anyone to love you. If they can't love you the way you are, the way you are equipped and you not harming, injuring and hurting them, baby, it's just because they just can't do it. It's nothing you can do to change that. If they had not changed by now and you have screamed it, shouted it, cried about it, talked about it, yelled it, uh, put it in rose petal writing whatever you've done I put it in a teddy bear one time <laughs> I did and I sent it with roses I did to a dude I wanted him to understand that he was loved so I put it in a teddy bear that was actually dressed in a bride <laughs> oh lord that probably seemed a little crazy but that's how I felt I sent him a dozen roses and a teddy bear. So if the person that I love is not equipped to handle my quirkiness, my weirdness, my my love language, they're not for me. And if they can't return it back, then they're not for me. And that is a lesson for you as well, my loves. But this is celebratory. Celebrate the small wins. Celebrate the small wins. Celebrate the small wins. Celebrate the small wins. Okay? Do that. I love you guys. I do, because y'all understand me. Y'all are my people. Y'all are my people. Y'all are my people. And y'all get me. Namaste, Ashe, Mazel Tov. Peace, love, and light, my loves.